In this video, I'm going to tell you five things that you can do to improve the quality of your play in the Pokemon TCG. Welcome back everyone to more from the Sableyes. I'm Mitch and today we are going to be doing something slightly different to my normal content. I'm going to be talking to you about five things that you can do to improve your gameplay in the Pokemon trading card game. This video idea was suggested by one of my Royal Sableye members, Drew. Thank you very much, Drew, for your suggestion. I'm sorry that it's taken so long for me to get to it. If you would like to suggest a video idea or perhaps a deck that you'd like me to cover in the future, then become a member. Jump down, there's a join button down below, you can figure it out. Anyway, let's talk about these five things that you can do to get better at the Pokemon TCG. Number one, the first thing that you can do to get better at the Pokemon trading card game is understanding your deck list. If you know all of the cards that are in your deck, you've got the full knowledge of every count, you know exactly how many of each card you have, and you know exactly why each of those cards are there, then you are poised to be better at the game than someone who's just taken a deck list from the internet and thrown it into the program. So the number one thing that I would recommend you do is always understand exactly what cards you have in your deck and why. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump across to PTCGO now and I'll show the deck that we used in our last video, that ADP Zashin with the Galarian Birds, and I'll talk you through exactly what I mean. So knowing the deck list means knowing why each of your cards are here. So we'll use our ADP deck from last video as an example. If you want to see this deck in action, then check out the last video. Appreciate all the likes on that one as well. Um, tell you what, let's have another like goal on this one. Can we get to 500 likes on this video? I'd really appreciate that. I see some more content coming your way soon. Let's talk about it. So, we know exactly why ADP is in the list. It's in the list because of the Altered Creation GX attack, which allows us to take extra prizes. It's also in the list because Ultimate Ray is a very good attack, it accelerates energy, and it can take knockouts, and those two attacks in combination are incredibly powerful. Now, why do we have, uh, let's say, why do we have two Zashins in our deck, for example? This is one of those things that lots of people just kind of put into the deck, they know ADP Zashin plays Zashin, but why have we got two here instead of three or four? Well, in general, the rule that I have been taught growing up, thanks to the world champion Henry Brand, just a very quick name drop there, is that you always want to play one more copy of a card than you're going to need in a deck. So, in this deck we have two copies of ADP because we need to use one. Similarly, this Zashin in this list we need to use at least one, so we'll put two into the deck. That way, if one of them gets prized, we've always got access to the other. Why do we not play three or four? Well, because we've got other attackers in this deck, cards like Moltres, cards like Zapdos that we can use instead, so we don't have to have Zashin as an attacker. Why Zashin? Why not a card like Corviknight VMAX, for example? Maybe, uh, why not... I don't know, Sizzle or something like that. They're all metal attackers. Why use Zashin? Well, we've got Brave Blade. 230 damage is incredibly strong for 3 metal energy. You might say, well, Mitch, Corviknight VMAX has a similar attack. It does pretty much the same thing. True, but Corviknight doesn't have the Intrepid Sword ability, which gives you that early game consistency. If you've watched my last video, then that is something that you'll know is very, very important. If we think about cards like Morwile, there's one Morwile in the list. We don't need to have two. We don't need need to play it, but it is nice to play because it's a good backup attacker with Wily Bite, 10 plus 30 for every Pokemon, can be useful, and the Captivating Wink ability is very, very powerful, particularly for this deck because we want to put Pokemon like the Dene and Crobat onto our opponent's bench so that we can take knockouts on them. So the Captivating Wink ability is really, really powerful. We don't need to use it, but it is good to have. So that's the first step that I would recommend and understand why every single card is in your list. Why do we play one copy of Echoing Horn? Because we want to use one copy in the late game to put down a new two prize Pokemon to knock out. Why do we play one Zapdos? So that we can use it against the Turninus. But we don't need to use it against the Turninus, so we only play one. Why do we play two Moltres? Well, we want to get one into play early. We want to get that ability Dire Flame Wings working early, so we're going to play two because if one's prized, we want to get the other one. That's my first recommendation. Always, always understand what are the 60 cards in your list, what numbers of cards do you play, and why are those cards in there? 
The second thing that you can do to get better at the Pokemon trading card game after you've learned your deck list is to know your matchups. If you know what you're going to do against a specific deck before the match starts, then you put yourself into a really good position to try and win it. So, for example, if we're playing our ADP deck, we need to know what matchups we're going to be playing against. Those top matchups are probably going to be things like Shadow Rider Calyrex, Ice Rider Calyrex, Eternatus, other uh, ADP decks, those kind of things. We're going to play Decidueye like we did in our last video. So what is our game plan going to be for those decks? I'll show you a different deck list now and we'll go through that process of trying to figure out what our matchup is going to be like. So here we have a nice, strong Shadow Rider Calyrex deck that is obviously very powerful. If you want to see it in action, I played this exact list in my live stream last Saturday, so search through, you'll be able to find it. But you'll notice there are a number of different attackers in the deck. We obviously have our default attacker, Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX, which is going to be able to deal large amounts of damage to pretty much any Pokemon. So this is our generic attacker, we're going to play four of these because we want to get this out as often as possible. And then we're going to be attacking with Max Geist in those situations where we just want to deal generically large amounts of damage. But you'll notice we have, what, four different tech attackers in this deck? So we need to know the matchups that we're going to use them in so that we can get those wins as soon as possible. Now we know Galarian Zapdos is going to be useful in the Eternatus matchup. Eternatus is a deck that really, really wins. Oh, well, this, well, our deck really struggles against it. That's what I'm trying to say. So we need to have an out to that matchup. Galarian Zapdos is the way to go. If we know we're playing against Eternatus, we're going to try and avoid benching as many of our dark weak Pokemon as possible and instead try and get knockouts with our Pokemon that are designed to knock those others out. Uh, we also have in our deck a copy of our Creamy VMAX so this is going to be another attacker that we're going to want to use specifically in the Eternatus matchup because Eternatus cannot one-shot our Creamy, it's not weak to dark so we can put this one down and take our second or first knockout with our Creamy VMAX try and get those wins across the line. We don't want to use cards like Gengar and Mimikyu or cards like Trevenant and Duskmire because they are easy prizes for our Eternatus player to take, so we want to avoid playing those. But they're in the deck for a reason. Why do we want to have them in there? Well, when we're not playing against the Eternatus, maybe we're playing against something like Rapid Strike Urshifu, we are going to want to use these attackers. And knowing the different times we want to use these cards in different matchups gives you an edge over people who don't know what these matchups are like. If you know that you're going in to Trevenant Dustwire in a situation where you've got a psychic weak opponent, or an opponent that relies on having a large hand size, you can money them down and remove their hand, then you know that you are in a position to win that game before the game has even started. So, it's, I've very poorly explained it, but if you understand why you've got the cards in your deck, that's step one, and then step two, those matchups when those cards are going to be important, you will give yourself an advantage over players who don't do those things. The third thing you can do to get better at the Pokemon trading card game is to check your prizes. This is something that is really, really easy to do, but a lot of really good players don't do it as often as they should. I know that I am always forgetting to check my prizes, and so sometimes I'll go looking for a card that isn't even in my deck. Checking your prizes is important for two reasons. Firstly, you know what cards you don't have access to. There are always going to be six cards from your deck that you cannot use during a game because you have to take the knockouts to get them. And if you know what six cards aren't in your deck, then you know what you're going to be able to utilize to win the game before you're taking prizes. Secondly, if you know what's in your prizes, you know what you're going to be getting when you take a knockout. So, for example, you might be in a position where you don't have a supporter in hand, but you know that there are three draw supporters in your six prize cards. Instead of going for a card like the Dene, for example, you might choose to take a knockout and take that 50-50 chance that you'll be able to find one of your draw supporters off of your six prizes. What I'll do is I'll jump onto a game just very quickly and I'll show you how easy it is to actually check your prizes on PTCGO. So I'm just jumping into a random game here. I'm not going to play the whole game out. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to check those prizes. Uh, we're going to be playing Eternatus. I'm just going to go first because it gives us the best chance to try and search our deck early. 
we need on our first search of the deck to identify what prizes we are going to be taking. So what cards are not in the deck so that we know what we have access to. We've got a bunch of search cards in our hand, so we are going to be able to at least search the deck early. Now, I have already failed at the first step in my particular, in my five card, uh, my five step thing, whatever I was talking about. Um, I, I already don't know exactly what all of the counts are in this particular deck, but we do have access to a ton of other stuff, right? So what am I talking about? Now, I know that Eternatus plays four Vs, so one of my Vs are prized. We have an Eternatus VMAX in our hand. Um, none of my other Pokemon are prized, so I know there's only one Pokemon in my prizes. Um, we've not used a uh, communication yet, so I'm pretty sure there's one of those in there. Um, it looks like we've got a research in the prizes as well. So I know, okay, there's going to be a V in the prizes, there's probably a Pokecom in there, there's likely to be a research as well. There are a ton of cards that we can get, it looks like there's a couple of energy too. Um, so I know with relative confidence that my prizes are going to be a pretty, they're going to be pretty solid, right? We know that for a fact. Now, I know I've got three Eternatus VMAX in my deck, so I don't need to worry about discarding that one. And we can just fill out our bench here and draw some more cards. Now, what I will do is I'll get to a position where I can take a knockout, because that will prove that I know what prizes I should be taking. So hopefully, we can knock this ADP out this turn, and I'll draw into a research and return this VMAX and whatever it is. No, not an Eternatus VMAX. I've already forgotten what prizes I'm supposed to be taking. But I know there's a research, an Eternatus V. I know there's likely one energy, maybe possibly two. And I think there's a com in there and maybe an energy switch as well. So we will hopefully take the knockout. And that way we can at least get close to uh, figuring out how we're going to go about winning this game. Um, what am I talking about? I've already used the Lipard. <gasps> they put a big charm down here. We can't take a knockout. We're going to need to find a bunch of Zigzagoons. Three Zigzagoons are going to need to come down this turn. So uh, let's watch. But we know we can do it, right? Because we've searched our deck. And we know there are three Zigzagoons in there. Hmm. Suddenly Mitch is not so stupid after all. He knows what he's talking about. All right, let's try and take this knockout. Just so I can feel better about myself. And we can move on with our day. Um, I am going to attach an energy. We're going to evolve into our VMAX. Uh, I am going to play Quick Ball to get rid of Energy Switch. I'm going to grab a Zigzagoon because I know that we need three of those. I'm actually not going to be able to take this knockout this turn because I've not got space to do anything other than draw cards. No! Okay, well, it's okay. We're just going to get to a point. I might just uh, fast forward here until I take a prize because I know that I'm going to take a prize eventually, uh, just not right now. So, yeah, speed this one up. Alright, it is our turn. We are not going to worry about doing anything because, well, I mean, we might as well play the research. But I'm not going to worry about playing this game out. I probably should worry about playing the game out. It's, we're just going to play the game out. But regardless, we know we're about to take a knockout. So, we're 99% sure we know what these prizes are going to be. I should find a V, an Eternatus V, a Research, a couple of Energy maybe, uh, a Pokecom, and maybe an Energy Switch. So let's see whether I was right. We're taking three prizes. Can we find a Professor's Research off of these prizes? Weakness Guard Energy was a card that I didn't identify, but that's because I don't know the deck. Uh, oh, Professor's Research. Look at that. And then our last card is a Great Ball, which is another card that, again, I didn't know. But I, we got one of them. We got one of the cards that I knew I was going to get. And that proves the point, right? You should know the deck list before you try and check your prizes. So number three didn't go quite as well as I would have liked, but it proved the point, right? You need to know number one and number three before you do all of these kind of things. Number four is also very important. In the middle of games, things will come up that you're not expecting. Even if you've mastered step two, you know all of your matchups, you know the ins and outs of every single game, sometimes situations will arise where you need to identify alternate win conditions. And this is something that, again, lots of people don't know. No, they don't do it 
they just attack and attack and attack and hope that they win. But sometimes you need to identify another way to win the game other than the way that you would traditionally want to. What I mean by this is, usually with ADP for example, you want to take a knockout on two Crobats after you've GX'd, or, or two Crobats or two Dedenates, right? Sometimes you'll find yourself in positions where you can't get the GX attack off, and if you don't attack, then you lose momentum in that game. So, identifying the fact that GXing is not going to happen, and that you need to find an alternate win condition, can be very critical. Let's just say I'm playing ADP up against Shadow Rider Calyrex. I miss my GX attack. That's really bad. But my opponent has two copies of Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX on the bench. Sometimes people will just go straight for the GX attack. They'll, they'll pass the turn, they'll miss the attack, they'll try and get that GX attack off because that's what the deck's supposed to do, and then go on to lose because they've put too many prizes in play. Instead of doing that, what you should do is you should try and figure out another way to win the game. Okay, well they've got two Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAXs down, I have two copies of Galarian Moltres in my deck, and that deals 190 with every attack that I use. Now, I don't have the GX attack, I'm not going to take extra prizes, but I know that I can one-shot two Shadow Wrecks as long as I've got two, uh, two Moltres attacking. So, my alternate win condition is just to attack twice with Moltres. I don't need to use the GX attack, I can just use the Moltres. Maybe we've gotten late into the game and our opponent has put us into a position where it's impossible for us to take another prize. We've got two prizes left but we can't knock anything out. We've lost our energy or we've lost all of our attackers. But, I notice my opponent only has two cards left in their deck, and I know that they're unlikely to play any more Switch cards or any more energy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and boss out a card that doesn't have energy attached to it, like Crobat or a Dedenne, and try and lock that Pokemon in the active so that my opponent decks themselves out and I win the game when ultimately I really shouldn't have. Identifying alternate win conditions is really, really difficult to do, and you need to practice to do it a lot. Um, but it's one of those things that, again, a really, really good player, a great player, will identify ways to win that a good player won't. So make sure that you're thinking throughout the game, how am I going to win? What's my strategy? And then when things go wrong, okay, how can I get out of this? How can I get out of this terrible situation? And the fifth and final thing that I would recommend that you do to get better at the Pokemon trading card game is learn to lose. Often, players, especially online, they'll see a bad hand at the start of a game and they'll go, I'm gonna lose, I'm just conceding the game. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait until I draw a better hand, until I start the game with a better starter, or whatever it is. But a good player won't do that. They will practice losing situations because that does two things. Firstly, it teaches you how other decks are going to beat you. And that's something that really good players always understand. What is my opponent trying to do to win the game? If I've not got everything perfect, and my opponent does X, Y, and Z, they win. So, in the future, when everything is going well for me, I will try and stop them from doing those things so that they can't win the game. Pretty sensible, right? It's a logical thing to do. The other thing that playing out bad hands will teach you is it will teach you how to get out of situations that aren't perfect. Right? And this is the real reason that you want to learn how to lose in this game. It's because... Ultimately, it's random. This game has a lot of chance in it. And if you learn that sometimes things just don't go perfectly, things don't just fall into your lap the way that they ought to, you learn how to get better in those situations and how to create more luck for yourself. One of the things that people learn when they are losing games is, I want to give myself the best chance to draw into cards that are going to help me. So you learn to thin out the deck, you learn to play cards in the correct sequence, you learn how to annoy your opponent until eventually you draw out of whatever terrible situation you are in. And so it's one of those things where it can be counterintuitive and sometimes it can be really hard. Like if you know you're going to be playing against control and you're sitting there for 25 minutes and you are going to lose, just play it out. 
Because you never know, you might learn something, you might see your opponent do something that you've never seen before, you might learn how your opponent's deck is trying to beat you, your opponent might make a horrific mistake and you get out of your bad hand and win the game, which you never would have done if you had have just quit straight away. So it's one of those really awkward things where you think you're going to get better at the game by winning more, you're actually only going to get better by losing, it's one of life's great mysteries, is why you only get better when you make mistakes, when you fail. So definitely, number five, the most important one, learn how to lose. Just play every game. Eventually, you're going you're gonna to get better, right? So there you have it. There's five ways that you can get better at the Pokemon trading card game. I'm kind of covering them up a little bit. But if you do any of these things, even if you only do one of them, you will improve the quality of your play significantly. Know your deck list. Know your matchups. Check your prizes, look for alternate win conditions, and ultimately accept that sometimes you're going to lose, and over time you will get better at this game. It is not a difficult thing to do if you are willing to put in the time and the effort. So there you have it, something a little bit different for you today, but something that is very valuable. Thank you very much to Drew down the bottom there in the Royal Sableye Yellow for suggesting this video topic. Uh, I, I know it wasn't exactly the same topic that you suggested, but I figured that it ultimately serves the same purpose. Uh, Drew asked about mistakes that you're making, that kind of stuff, and I think, I think this one works quite well. Thank you to all of my channel members, particularly the ones on the left-hand side who are putting in a significant contribution, uh, as well as all of the Mega Sableyes over here in white. If you would like to suggest a video topic, or perhaps a deck list that you'd like me to take a look at, then become a member. The Royal Sableye tier for $15 a month, that is something that you get out of that. Otherwise, if you just want to support the channel, you don't necessarily want to pay that $15, bucks, $3 a month uh, for the base tier, or just, you know, watch the videos, like the videos, get, get them to as many likes as possible. It's free, right? I'm doing this for free, so don't stress if you can't afford to. Otherwise, thank you to everyone over here. Thank you to you for coming along. Hopefully, I've been able to help you out today, and I look forward to seeing you next time for more from the Sableyes. Bye.